Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Greg Fisher, the mayor of Louisville. Thank you for tuning in, and thanks, everybody, for coming here today. I want to thank Councilman Hollander uh, for his leadership on this issue. Thanks also to the support of President James, Councilman Cohn, Councilwoman Dorsey, and Councilwoman George, along with the other sponsors of this ordinance. I want to thank Councilman Cohn and Councilwoman George for being with us here today, along with uh, Councilman Hollander. I want to thank the Fairness Campaign and the Band Conversion Therapy Kentucky for their work in getting this ordinance introduced and passed, including the education and outreach necessary to this process. Because once any compassionate person understands what conversion therapy is, then it's clear that it has no place in our city, our state, or our country. I'm very thankful to our partners on the Metro Council who passed this ordinance, which will prohibit mental health professionals from engaging in sexual orientation and gender identity change efforts with minors. The intent of this ordinance is to protect minors from the serious physical and psychological harms and risks caused by so-called conversion therapy or reparative therapy. Because our LGBTQ kids, they don't need to be converted or repaired. They need to be loved, supported, and accepted for who they are. And this ordinance is one more way for our city to demonstrate our city's long-standing commitment to our LGBTQ community. Louisville was one of the first cities in the South to pass a fairness ordinance back in 1999. We celebrated the 20th anniversary last year during Pride Week by flying two custom-made Pride flags right outside in front of Metro Hall. Our city has also earned a perfect score of 100 on the Human Rights Campaign Municipal Equality Index five years in a row, which again reflects Metro government's ongoing support of the LGBTQ community. We're very proud of that and our continuing work with Louisville Tourism, the Fairness Campaign, and other community partners to make Louisville an even more compassionate, welcoming, and inclusive city. Right now, I'd like to turn things over to Councilman Bill Hollander, who introduced this ordinance to the Metro Council. Councilman. Thank you, Mayor Fisher. Uh, I want to thank the original co-sponsors of the ordinance, uh, Council Members George and Cohn, who are with us today, and Jessica Green, who is working from home and attending to her brand new baby, Lennox David Robinson. We started out with four sponsors and we ended up with nine. I also thank uh, Council Members Shanklin, Malva Hill, Triplett, Winkler, and President James. Most importantly, I want to thank all 24 colleagues who voted for this ordinance in a broad, bipartisan way. Band Conversion Therapy Kentucky, the Trevor Project, and of course Chris Hartman and the Fairness Campaign helped along the way, along with various members of the administration, especially Louisville Metro's Chief Equity Officer, Kendall Boyd, who is with us here today. Thank you for being here, Kendall. And thanks to Natalie Johnson from the County Attorney's Office, who helped with the ordinance drafting. Today, we join 20 states, more than 70 cities and counties, and five nations in taking action to ban thoroughly discredited practices that hurt children who are subjected to them. The harms include depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and suicidal thoughts and attempts. That's why every mainstream medical and mental health organization in the country supports a nationwide ban. It's why we heard from so many Louisvillians in support of this ordinance, often with firsthand accounts. There is still work to do. A bipartisan group is working to pass similar statewide legislation. I wish Representative Lisa Wilner from here in Louisville and Senator Alice Forgy Kerr from Lexington success in that effort next year, and we will also be pushing for a statewide ban. I'm confident that we will look back and be amazed that we were actually still talking about conversion therapy in 2020. And I'm glad to say that Louisville helped end it by the signing of this ordinance today. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, now I'd like to introduce one of our outstanding partners in the work to promote greater fairness and inclusion in our city in our state, and that is Chris Hartman, the Executive Director of the Fairness Campaign. Chris. <laughs> okay, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you, Mayor Fisher, Councilman Hollander. Uh, today is certainly historic, and I do want to thank Mayor Fisher for once again enacting an historic piece of LGBTQ advancement here in our city. Uh, we have had many firsts in the state. We're, we're not the first to ban conversion therapy. Uh, Covington beat us to the punch by a few minutes there. Uh, but this is no less historic, uh, and we are one of the few cities across America uh, that has taken up uh, the mantle to do this when the state legislature has not yet. So I do also want to thank State Representative Lisa Wilner, State Senator Alice Forgy Kerr, who are both advancing this issue in the Kentucky General Assembly, but of course to Councilman Bill Hollander, who carried this issue and got a nearly unanimous passage. If you'd have told me 10 years ago when I started at the Fairness Campaign that we'd be seeing nearly unanimous passage of LGBTQ rights laws, I, I would not have believed it, but here we are. I do also need to say, though, that I believe there is no bigger LGBTQ rights issue in America right now than the cry for justice for Breonna Taylor and an end to police violence against black and brown Americans and justice for Attica Scott, her daughter Ashanti, and Shamika Parrish Wright, and others who were arrested on heinous rioting charges last week. Felony rioting charges. Few have done as much for our community, for LGBTQ rights locally and in Kentucky than State Representative Scott. And the thought that she, her daughter, and Shamika would be involved in a riot that sought to burn our library is ludicrous. And so I'd like to take this moment, not just to call for justice for Breonna Taylor, but to call on another longtime fairness campaign ally, Jefferson County Attorney Mike O'Connell, to immediately drop these felony charges against Attica, Ashanti, and Shamika. And that, I think, will further advance justice for all of us and for LGBTQ rights. Black transgender Americans suffer more violence, not just at the hands of law enforcement, but everyone else in America. And so anything we can do to advance the cry for Black Lives Matter and justice for Breonna Taylor is a clear advancement of LGBTQ civil rights. So I want to thank everyone here today for saving the lives of many LGBTQ children and make that call. Thank you. And now let's hear from Jacob Conway. He will be speaking on behalf of Band, Conver Band Conversion Therapy Kentucky, which is an organization working to change laws and project protect our LGBTQ young people. Jacob. Do I leave it on? Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councilman Hollander and Chris. And I echo everything that Chris just said more eloquently than I could. I've known Representative Scott for a long time, and um, the charges ought to be dropped against her and everyone else. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman George, for your leadership, and Councilman Cohen on this. It, everyone here, the Mayor and the Councilman and Chris have said that the scientific evidence is clear, and that's why every medical... Uh, major medical and mental health organization in Kentucky and across the United States has um, agrees that conversion therapy is harmful, ineffective, outdated, discredited, junk science, whatever you want to call it. And I, um, like Chris, um, was surprised that, and, and impressed that the ban passed with an overwhelming majority, and I think that speaks to all of your all's leadership here. Uh, when I first started, actually, in this very room, um, in 2001, in public service, as an intern for uh, Dolores Delahanty's office, I never would have thought that um, um, LGBT rights issues, LGBTQ rights issues, would have passed with such an overwhelming majority. And, um, and I think that speaks to how far we've come. But we still have far to go, like Chris said. And I hope, um, as Louisville is the gateway to the South and the gateway to our state, our Commonwealth, that this will give us the momentum we need to move forward um, in passing a statewide or uh, statewide law that will ban this harmful, discredited, torturous practice, as Senator Kerr likes to call it. Uh, so I'd just like to say thank you to the mayor and the council people, and um, job well done. OK, 
Okay, thank you, everybody. And again, thank you to the council for their leadership on this. So I'm pr proud now to sign this ordinance into law, and I'm deeply grateful to my Metro Council colleagues for passing this measure. I know there are bipartisan conversations in Frankfurt about a similar ban, and I strongly encourage the leadership in Frankfurt to take this step and do statewide what we're about ready to do right now in our city and ban the practice of conversion therapy on minors forever. So we'll sign the bill now. Okay. This is uh, ordinance number 117, which is an ordinance creating a new chapter of the Louisville Metro Code of Ordinances to prohibit mental health professionals from engaging in sexual orientation and gender identity change efforts. So on this day of October 1st, I'm proud to sign this bill into law in Louisville and Jefferson County forever. 